advancing bills through the Senate takes the cooperation of both parties. We understand that clearly. We've been very clear for a long time that the bills that came out of the Senate Finance Committee by a big, big margin should be put together and put on the Senate floor. We've been saying this for a long, long time. Uh, everyone knows I'm not a fan of fast track, but that doesn't take away from the fact that legislation has to be done in a fair basis, and that's what we're talking about. Take these four bills, and as Senator McConnell said on the floor today, he wants to do two of them, which we disagree. He said, let's do the two of them, then we'll start the amendment process. Logically, what we should do is all four of them and then start the amendment process. That would be a way to get this thing moving much more quickly than what he's talking about doing. The deal doesn't have to be a fight. There's a simple path forward, just put all four bills together, bring them to the floor. It doesn't have, this whole deal has, doesn't have to be very hard. It's very easy. I hope my counterpart, the Republican leader, will see that and see it very, very quickly. That's a way forward on this bill. Members of the Senate Finance Committee and others will have uh, some comments on what led up to today. My observation is very general. Take a look at what we've done since the first of the year and the new leadership of the Republicans. We made an effort on the floor with the Keystone Pipeline and spent about three or four weeks on a bill that was ultimately vetoed by the President. We were tied up for another three or four weeks on a bill for the Department of Homeland Security tied up by immigration writers from the Republicans in the House. Another three or four weeks tied up on this trafficking bill over the Hyde Amendment. The issues that have moved forward are the issues where we've done them on a bipartisan basis. I think of the Iran decision that came out of the Foreign Relations Committee 19 to nothing, a bipartisan effort passed on the floor with only one dissenting vote. And I think as well of the doc fix that came out of the House of Representatives as a bipartisan measure. Is there a lesson to be learned here? I think it clearly is a lesson in the Senate that if you want to move forward in an orderly, timely way, you need to come together on a bipartisan basis, agree with the procedure, and move forward on the substance. What's missing on this trade agreement is the front end agreement on the process that's going to be followed, and that may be reflected this afternoon's vote. Schumer. Thank you. And uh, in a few moments, Senator McConnell is going to be holding a vote to have the Senate start off on a path that leads us to a free trade deal, but away from critical worker protections. He wants people to believe that he's committed to passing all four bills. But if you read the fine print, that's not what he's done. As Chairman, as Ranking Member Wyden will tell you, in our Finance Committee, we agreed to all four bills. No one would have thought we were going to leave off the Customs Bill. It has critical worker protections. And if we thought it would never come up, it would be like putting amendments into uh, file 13, something that would just be thrown away in the trash. And now Senator McConnell has unilaterally moved to the floor and said that he just wants two of the four, leaving out essential worker protections in the Customs Bill. We know the global economy is a rough sea. And Republicans are asking us to pass a trade package that forces the American worker to navigate those waters in a leaky boat. We want to plug up those leaks. Democrats, we have a view that we need strong protections. Our caucus is united in that Senator McConnell must give us an equal chance at all four bills. Passing a trade agenda without working protections will mean that American workers are left hung out to dry. Now, the Customs Bill contains provisions to combat child labor. Those would be left out. To help strengthen the steel and solar industries and others in terms of enforcement. One of the key watchwords of this bill. Those would be left out. And, of course, currency to prevent China from currency manipulation, which would also be left out, even though it passed bipartisan in committee by an 18 to 8 vote, with all but one Democrat voting for it. And as you know, most of the Democrats on the Finance Committee are pro-free trade, and with about half, one less than half, the Republicans voting for it. So, if the administration says the goal of this agreement is to lure Pacific nations away from China, we'll, we're, we'll, passing our currency bill is part and parcel to that goal. 
We're not saying it has to be part of TPA. We are simply saying we want the same fair chance at voting on that amendment as Senator McConnell is giving on that bill as giving Senator McConnell is giving on the other two bills. Some opponents claim this bill could leave the Fed vulnerable to charges. We're manipulating our currency. That's a red herring. So we hope the White House will join us in the effort to get currency stronger and pressure McConnell to make sure these bills move concurrently, not just take two and on his own whim leave two behind, even though all were passed out of the Finance Committee, obviously Republican controlled by unanimous votes or close to unanimous votes on some. So Democrats are not going to go out down this path without assurances from Senator McConnell that we are going to get opportunities to vote on all of these bills and that they will move together. Senator Murray. As someone who supports the underlying package of trade bills, I join my colleagues in working to make sure the Republican majority allows us to get this done right. Senator Wyden has worked very hard on a package of bills that include strong worker protections and passed through the Finance Committee with broad bipartisan support. There are Democrats and Republicans on both sides of this issue, but many of us believe that this package of bills would be good for our states and would move our country in the right direction when it comes to leveling the playing field and holding other countries accountable. But right now, Majority Leader McConnell is not willing to provide the assurance that we need to make sure we have a credible path forward on the package of bills and not just on the pieces of it that have been pushed by the Republicans. So now the ball is in his court. Many of us are very interested in bringing this package to the floor to debate, to amend, and for each member to allow to be voted the way they think is right. So I'm hopeful that Republicans will come back to the table and work with us now to start this debate in a fair way and offer a credible path to getting it done right. Before I introduce our ranking member of the committee, I want to say this before everybody. We have, when the Republicans came before us, I understand what they had to say. And I want the world to know that Ron Wyden is a man of his word, and I appreciate how hard this has been for him, but I am very disappointed that there's been the name calling of the other side. Ron Wyden is somebody that the caucus supports 100%. Leader, thank you. And Senator Murray said it uh, very well, touching on a number of very important points, and so I'm going to be brief. About an hour ago, a large group of pro-trade Democrats met. Now, these are all senators who are thoroughly, and let me emphasize thoroughly, committed to getting this bill passed. Our concern, our special concern this afternoon, is about the lack of a commitment to trade enforcement. And the reason this is so important is that again and again, and Senator Murray and I come from very important pro-trade states, people will come up and say, everybody in Washington is talking about a new trade agreement. Let's enforce the laws that are on the books. And let me just give you an example of the kind of consequences that you see from the lack of enforcement of trade law. This is a quote directly from the morning paper. Candy makers want to preserve a loophole closed in the customs bill that allows them to import African cocoa harvested by child labor. So in effect, after decades of use of child labor, the Senate Finance Committee has, in effect, said on a bipartisan basis, we want to close that loophole, and yet enforcement is getting short shrift today. And I'll just wrap up by saying, in my view, short shrift for trade enforcement is legislative malpractice. And until there is a path to get all four bills done, 
you're going to see a number of pro-trade Democrats, Democrats who want to get this bill passed, you will see them vote no. I will be among them. We have a vote that's pending, so we'll take a few questions. What's wrong with you? Uh, what sort of assurances are you looking for? I mean, both you and uh, Senator Clyde say you need a path. Very, very simple question. Do you accept it? I'll give you, I'll give, I'll give you, I'll give you a simple, simple answer. Put all four bills on the floor in one package, okay? One package. Is there anything and short let me answer your question. Please stop interrupting me. And at that time, we'll do what McConnell said he wanted to do today on his two. We'll start the amendment process. That's the way we should be legislating. Senator Durbin, I want to ask you a question. So you tweeted about the SEC suing ITT. Uh, the, the <laughs> Pleasant change of pace. Change the subject. But I want to know what's competing legislation on for-profit colleges, which I think is a pet issue of yours. I've offered it several times. It turns, they have turns out they have friends in high places. Senator Wyden, so do you think that the provisions in the customs bill if those become law, could the president actually complete the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or will that just send the, all the negotiating partners scurrying into the woods? You know, I'm going to interject myself. You didn't ask me the question, but I'm going to answer. Why don't we talk about what we're doing out here now? There are all kinds of speculations of what would happen once we get on this bill and start legislating. But I think Ron Wyden said it about as clearly as can be said. We have a significant number of Democrats, um, at least eight, perhaps a lot more than that, who want this free trade bill passed. So we should get on the bill and let the Senate work its will, not be having some arbitrary ideas pushed forward by the Republican leader that we're not going to deal with what was done in the Finance Committee. He's talked about the importance of committees. The committee on a bipartisan basis reported out four bills. They should be held together, and we've talked about that for weeks now. So they should be held together. And we'll, there are all kinds of, of uh, hypotheticals, but I, I'm, we're not going to answer hypotheticals today. We're going to deal with what's on the floor. Senator Wyden, Senator say that if you add the customs enforcement bill with the currency manipulation language to this package, it's a poison pill. The package right. will pass. Well, I'll, I'll answer that. And the reason that the leadership wants it in there is they want to kill this package. Alex, okay. I'll, only ahead, tell you, I'll let Senator Schumer speak, but it passed by a voice vote, the enforcement package, which ought to suggest that there wasn't a lot of controversy. And explicitly, I did not offer the currency amendment to the TPA bill. We were told that it would not be part, if it were part of TPA, it might kill it. My goal is not to use currency to kill the TPA bill and not to kill the TPA bill. It's to get currency passed, and that's why we offered it to the customs bill on the view, strong view, that no one disputed in committee that we'd get a vote separately on the customs bill on the floor, that it would come to the floor just like the other bills. Okay. Senator Wyden, Senator Wyden, Senator Votes Wyden. pending now. We're going to go. Okay. Thank you.